After reviewing the 150 euros costing Yamaha WXAD10 streamer, I wondered what this bigger brother would offer. At least it's far more pleasing to the eye. In contrast to the WXAD10, the WXC50 looks a lot more sophisticated. There are two versions, a preamplifier streamer and a preamplifier streamer power amplifier, the latter having a 2x70 watt class D amp and is called the WXA50. I review the streamer preamp here. The elegant and compact aluminium housing measures to 14 by 245 by 51.5 mm. On the front we see an infrared sensor for the supplied remote control, a power button, an input selector, a play pause button that doubles as a connection button for the app, a status LED that indicates the inputs by color, a Bluetooth indicator and a volume control. The rear is more crowded. Let's start with the optical digital input on Toslink, the Ethernet socket, the USB socket for storage media, an analog stereo line input and output, a subwoofer output, a preamplifier output that can be set to variable or fixed with this switch and the digital outputs on Toslink and RCA. Then on the left the AC input, a trigger in and output, a switch to enable or disable Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or both, a connection for an infrared remote sensor and a connection for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna. When we unscrew the top we see a lot happening on one side and complete emptiness on the other. In the WXA50, the amped version, this side contains the class D amp. The crowded side contains the streamer and preamp. On top the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios nicely canned. Let's remove it for better access to the PCB. Just behind the front is the linear power supply nicely filtered. The next thing to notice is the microprocessor. Just like the WXAD10, it's a Toshiba ARM processor but this one is more powerful. Then something puzzling. The ESS Sabre ES9006 DAC chip immediately was found. It can do up to 8 channels PCM and DSD and is used in many AV receivers including those by Yamaha. But there is also a Burr Brown PCM 5101A on the PCB, a DAC chip that only does PCM. Why two DAC chips? I don't know. I expect the ESS to be the major one since it also does DSD and incorporates a nice digital volume control. The Burr Brown might feed the line output that has a fixed level. Before using the WXC50 you need to connect it to the power supply and the network. Then download and install the free music cast app on your smartphone or tablet. Then start the app that will report no devices have been found. So you press setup and you will be asked to power on the WXC50 and press next. Then hold the play pause button on the front pressed for 5 seconds and tap next again. As soon as the WXC50 is recognized you will be asked to give it a name and select a photo or take a photo of your room using your smartphone or tablet. In the end you see the rooms screen with your WXC50 and a photo. When you add more MusicCast devices they will also appear here. Tap the photo and you see your preferred music, initially empty of course, and the sources. The paid services like Cobus and Tidal will need an active account of course. If you don't or had not yet filled out the username and password for that service you get a message. So let's go to one of my own servers and select some music. The way the music is presented depends on the DNA server software. I use the Minim server here. Since the WXC50 is a preamp as well, I connected it as a preamp in my setup 1 and 2. 
The audio note was modified by Peter van Willenswaard to switch to a power amp when a trigger input carries 12 volt. The Marantz KI Lite is equipped with a power input which can be selected from the front. But I started with my setup 3 with the output fixed and connected to the CD input of the NAD amp. Based on what I had seen inside, I did expect a rather decent audio quality, but even so I under underestimated it. My setup 3 was well served while my setup 2 ranked it below the Chord Mojo but clearly above the Raspberry Pi options there. Even in my setup 1, the sound quality was agreeable. Of course clearly lower than the SOTM and MyTech combo, but I would have been pleased with it a number of years ago. That's how much digital audio has evolved. Given the price, I directly compared it with the Sonos Connect that cost about the same but is nowhere near the Yamaha sound wise. I also compared it to the Blue Sound Note 2 and here I preferred the Blue Sound when using PCM and MQA. Blue Sound doesn't support DSD. But the difference in sound is less than the difference in price although there are of course other considerations. I named three streamers, Sonos, Blue Sound and this Yamaha. As where the Sonos and Blue Sound are functionally roughly the same, the Yamaha is a preamp with inputs and the possibility to switch on an external power amp. Whether that is important to you I can't say. But the Sonos is limited to a pre-war maximum of 48 kHz sampling, where the other two go to 192 kHz. Then there is a software. Sonos had a head start but lost pole position already a few years ago. Especially browsing music for finding something you want to play is more agreeable in blue sound. The Yamaha Musiccast software scores equal to the Sonos on this point but is far more versatile as a multi-room system, has clearer accessibility to rooms and offers Bluetooth and AirPlay in both directions. So a Musiccast device can receive music from a smartphone but also can send music to a Bluetooth or AirPlay speaker. Add to that the excellent build quality, a nice design and a standard remote control. This is the third Yamaha product I reviewed in a short time. Yamaha wanted me to live with the Musiccast concept and thus lent me a collection of Musiccast devices. I won't review them all, I warned up ahead, but there was no problem they said. I couldn't help trying them all out, but apart from the little active speaker, I had to review them all as you have noticed. But when you look for a streamer, a preamp or both under 400 euros, this probably is the best choice. But if there is a manufacturer wanting to challenge this, he only has to lend me his product for a few weeks. And if you want to keep posted, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes and don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>